Hello everyone, it's the Mad Sci Guy here with some quick content that's a bit different. Now, one of the reasons why I love material science is that it can truly change the way you see the world. We obviously deal with materials every day, and by learning some of the fundamental science behind materials, you can better understand some of the ways we interact with them. I'm going to use these two things as a good example of this. The stress-strain curve and a paperclip. The stress-strain curve is a common sight for those in a wide variety of engineering fields. The strain is how much you are deforming the material relative to its initial shape, basically how much we have stretched the material if we are performing this in tension, and the stress is the force per unit area exerted as the material is stretched, basically how hard our material is pulling back in response. When you hear the term tensile strength, it refers to this point on the curve. Basically, the most force per unit area the material can withstand. Obviously, the curve is material dependent, but for commonly used structural metals, this basic shape is quite common. To make this more tangible, we'll use this, the humble paperclip, an object that is commonly used for removing SIM cards and pushing hard-to-reach reset buttons on electronics, but I'm told that in a previous era it had other uses as well. Who knew? What you might not realize is that if you've ever bent this, you probably already know the principles of this. You just might not have made the connection until now. So let's start bending, and I'm going to use a larger paperclip just for purposes of visualizing this, but it works with any size. Let's say you're trying to straighten out one end into this shape. If you bend this only a tiny bit, you'll notice that it stretches back to its original shape. This is known as elastic deformation, and it's our steep linear region on this graph. Here, the force we feel pushing back against us is simply the stretching of atomic bonds in the material. These are essentially tiny springs, so the response is linear. More force means more displacement. It's also temporary. We haven't changed the location of any of these atoms, so once the force is removed, these atoms return to their equilibrium spacing. We can go up and down this linear elastic region and still never change the shape of our paperclip. If we start to apply more force, we notice that now we're actually bending the paperclip into a new shape. On our graph, we have entered the range of plastic deformation. In metals, plastic deformation occurs through slip, where crystal defects called dislocations move within the structure. Unlike the previous region of elastic deformation, atoms are actually changing location relative to each other. Even once the force is removed, our paperclip shape remains altered. The force to induce dislocation movement is also fairly constant in a material like this, so once we start to bend the paperclip, we don't need to apply more and more force to bend it further. There is often a slight increase in metals due to work hardening, but it's probably too small to feel in this case. The other thing that the paperclip can teach us is that just because we are in the plastic deformation range doesn't mean that our linear elastic region has magically disappeared. If you're trying to fully straighten out one end of the paperclip like this, you're always going to bend it slightly further than the desired final shape, in anticipation of it partially returning to its original shape. Those atomic bonds we elastically stretched in the beginning will still return to their equilibrium state, so the total permanent deformation we induced is not how far we've bent the paperclip, but how far we've bent the paperclip minus that initial stretch. Tensile stress strain curves often run to failure, but in cases where load is removed, we see a similarly linear region that is analogous to this. Now, obviously this isn't a perfect analogy. We are looking at a stress strain curve in tension, but performing a bending test, and we also haven't accounted for the geometric complexity of the paperclip. Nevertheless, the underlying principles are still true. So there you have it. Whether you study material science or not, you're already intimately familiar with concepts of elastic and plastic strain, and utilize them to your advantage whenever you bend things like this. Material science is all around us. You just have to know where to look.